universal basic income. And I get it. I know. I've talked a lot about UBI, but in terms of this capitalist-driven automation, it's a very I needed idea. you going to say robots. No, oh, God. Yeah, well, the robots are <laughs> part of this problem. <laughs> In order to prevent the, the dystopian future uh, that uh, directors like James Cameron have predicted, uh, we're going to need a universal basic income. And if you're unaware of what UBI is, it's basically uh, every citizen of a country gets a flat amount of money that would cover the cost of rent, food, water, health, shelter, and these days I would also say the internet. Right. The biggest argument against giving Americans a UBI is that people would stop working despite there being absolutely no proof of that. In fact, when American, the American people received an additional $600 a week in unemployment, a Yale study found that a majority of people didn't stop looking for work. And even the Chicago Federal Reserve came to the same conclusion as they deposited their trillions in handouts from the Democrats and Republicans. <laughs> I, kind of, I think like if the Fed can figure out that taking care of Americans' financial needs is a good thing, it should kind of be a no-brainer considering that the Fed comes from no brains at all. <laughs> UBI works. It's successful. The it Canadians does. have got it though. Yeah, and see the Canadians got one that works. Don't get out of me. One that works. Yeah. <laughs> well, there we go. But here, I think, I think our culture treats money like it's the perfect drug, right? Each week we'll do damn near anything f to get that sweet, sweet paycheck, right? We get that hit and then we keep coming back for more. And then when we can't, we get desperate and we just start walking around going, I'll suck your dick for a dollar. Just let me... <laughs> Just let me see that old Washington, please. Right? Most of us are like, no, that's called prostitution, and it's illegal in this Christian nation. Okay? <laughs> you can whore for money, but you can't be a whore for money. You guys get it? But here's I the see what you did there. Ah, thank you. I appreciate it. One person, everybody else is groaning in their seats. I get it. <laughs> But here's the thing, not, not just all this uh, unemployment stuff is proof that UBI will work. We have even more proof that it works and, and not just in these you know, socialist countries like Canada. It, it can work right here in the United States and universal basic income wouldn't de-incentivize work. In 1982, in that socialist state we call Alaska, they implemented a permanent universal basic income. It was called the Alaskan permanent fund and it taxed the oil under Alaska and if the oil companies want to drill they would have to pay for it. To make it simple they taxed the oil that was found underneath the soil and water of Alaska very rich deposit worth billions and billions of dollars they taxed it a small tax on it to produce a fund and the fund was then invested and the idea was these are the resources of the state of Alaska nobody put them there uh, that's living or that's around today or ever for that matter and so it's in a sense a resource a national or natural resource and so here's what's done the income earned by that fund invested as any fund would be is distributed to every citizen of Alaska. The same amount each person. That's been going on, as I say, almost 40 years. Now, corporations are so addicted to oil that Alaska just put that addiction to good use, right? The oil companies were like, listen, Alaska, we will suck yo dick for that oil, dog. <laughs> And Alaska was like, oh my God, you have to chill out. Like, please, <laughs> please put your pants back on and stop rubbing your nipples. Please, this is, this is genuinely horrifying. Uh, how about you just give us a bunch of money in taxes for drilling and then you can have the oil. Please stop, please stop touching yourself. <laughs> now, this, this Alaskan UBI fluctuated, right? It went as high as $2,000 a month or as low as $800 a year. At its height in 2015, when the price of oil was high, it worked out to $2,072 per 
per person, which meant for a family of four, a little bit over $8,000 was simply given to them and to everybody else equally. It's been as low as $800 to $900 per person per year. Now, the people in Alaska didn't stop working to pursue a career in being a rock star or a fucking ice road trucker reality star. They, those jobs were left for the robots to do, you guys. The robots will be the rock stars now. We don't, we're all so tired. You know, Keith is getting old, you guys. He's getting <laughs> really fucking old. But nobody stopped working. Two professors, Damon Jones of the University of Chicago and Ioana Marinescu of the University of Pennsylvania, found that doing this had no effect on employment. Why did they ask that question? Because right-wing critics of these ideas argue that if you give people money just as a citizen, well, then they won't bother to work and we will have people withdrawing from labor. And this research showed, showed crystal clearly that nothing like that happened in Alaska. You gave people money, they didn't stop working or reduce their work commitment at all. But this whole idea of incentive for work is something both Democrats and Republicans bark about all day while letting their owners, the rich capitalists, create more unemployment and homelessness for free, you guys. There's no price on that. Uh, what a deal. But, I mean, the history of Alaska's permanent fund is seldom addressed, and so is the fact that most European countries and Canada have enacted UBI for their citizens during a pandemic, and it's working, right? America is the only so-called first world country that is still trying to means test if helping people financially is a good thing. This, again, is a study that both Democrats and Republicans are pushing for. And it basically turns the poor working class of America into lab rats to see if they are deserving of help from those on high. And study after study has proven that financially helping those in need is a good thing. I mean, at this point, this duopoly is trying to manufacture a result to justify their cruelty. Now, for the, those staunch conservatives and neoliberals who believe that receiving help is a sign of weakness that only ends in both physical and mental castration, <laughs> we, we do have other ideas that do very similar things to a UBI, just a, just a little different. The idea would be implemented through social democracy that doesn't deposit cash into a citizen's account, but rather gives the people healthcare, utilities, housing, and food as public services. I like the idea of social democracy uh, as it's applied in real countries in Europe, in the Netherlands, in Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Germany. The idea is everybody has access to publicly financed healthcare. Everybody has access to quality, publicly financed education, including college tuitions, not a trillion dollars of crushing student debt, but tuitions paid for. Everybody has access to not only guaranteed vacation, but paid vacation. Everybody has access to quality child care so that moms can go to work knowing that their kids are in a healthy, nurturing environment. Everybody has access to maternity leave so that moms and also paternity leave uh, dads can stay home with their kids for several months. It's kind of decent where you say, we have all this wonderful technology, this wealth, why don't we live decently, not, not miserably? It's decency, it's public services, it's basic needs met. I see it as basically living decent lives in decent societies. They have a very different spirit to them. There aren't a lot of super rich Wall Street hedge fund uh, misanthropes, and I'll use the term advisedly because I find a lot of people on Wall Street don't give a damn about anybody else except they care about their money, and I find that really weird. But you don't find that kind of uh, idea in Northern Europe because it's uh, really looked down upon, uh, and people don't like it when uh, 
people are money grubbing. They're kind of shunned. So the social ethos is different. That's right. You heard it here, folks. For bailing out Wall Street over the American people, all of Congress and every president should be shunned. Call the power of the Amish. Right? <laughs> <laughs> We shun them all. Like I understand the irony of bringing Amish people into a technology-related show. I get it. <laughs> Look, I think we could just take all of Congress and every president, and we shun them and send them to like one of Jeff Bezos's islands, right? Like maybe the one <laughs> where where he silently masturbates while an in intern counts his money for him. Uh, we could send um, them all there. Yeah, he, he, he probably. He probably does that too. Yeah, I know. Which so yeah, the Nancy Pelosi image earlier, not that bad, right? You guys, huh? <laughs> not that bad now. No, <laughs> no more. <laughs> no more. <laughs> Look, I, I'm really? sure because there's leaked pics, Kit. Don't They're you dare on the interwebs. Don't I'm you sorry. dare. You could see that billionaire string bean for yourself, man. Oh God, mm. again. I believe he, he doesn't call it Jack in it. He calls it Jeff in it. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Sorry. Sorry. You know, <laughs> this is the comedy show that I Welcome. thought I was going to get. Yeah. I Welcome. came in five minutes late. Welcome. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I get it. There's probably some people that are going to come out and be like, well, you know, is it, is it getting yeah, UBI just money grubbing? Right, which asking for basic needs isn't grubbing for money. That's that's like saying a blind person is sight grubbing because they want to see a sunset. <laughs> the difference between the ideas of welfare and unemployment and universal basic income is that under a UBI, no one gets left behind. Right, everybody would be getting a fair share of their needs covered, and of course. Everybody wants to know, but where, where's the money going to come from, Chris? Where, I, where, do, where are we going to get all that money from? What are we going to do with about all that money? For, I, I feel like, look, if the bosses are making the decisions to automate and create unemployment in our society, they can bear some of the burden, right? Oh, you think? Yeah, I know. What a crazy idea. But it was actually proposed in the city of San Francisco as a robot tax, right? The, the tech companies fought against this, and this isn't us directly taxing the robots and, and making them pay for a UBI, because then I'm sure we all of a sudden get a bunch of like libertarian robots, right, like claiming taxation is theft and quoting Ayn Rand all day, and none of us want that. We don't want that. <laughs> here's, here's what the robot tax actually is. That's Jane Kim, a San Francisco city supervisor running for mayor, who has proposed a robot tax to help correct the inequality that is now a defining characteristic of the Bay Area. San Francisco has the fastest growing income gap between the rich and the poor of any city in the country. The income gap comparing annual pay between the wealthiest and poorest 20% grew in San Francisco by more than $70,000 in five years. That has made San Francisco into a city with glittering tech towers, fancy cars, and multi-million dollar homes on every street. I want to say that I do think automation is a good thing. It's a positive thing. Um, it's going to increase our productivity. It's going to grow our economy. It's going to you know, help save lives and maybe even fight climate change. Um, but there is going to be a downside um, to this technological progress. Automation is going to further concentrate wealth in the hands of the few who own the robots. Now this idea is literally no different than Andrew Yang's value-added tax, which would tax tech companies on their wealth as they automate more technologies, right? This is the same thing. And really think about it. If all the work that was needed in the world was done by one third of the human population, and then automation comes in and drops all that wealth, uh, drops all that work down to 10%, and there was no drop in profit, who's seeing more of that profit? It's the bosses, it's the CEOs, the billionaires, all these, all these rich fucks at the top, right? And they don't give a raise to the rest of the 10% that they do employ. None of the workers get to see that, right? But if we put a UBI in place and tax that enormous wealth that these capitalists are making, then we can even out that playing field. And guys, I did do the math. I did the math on this. 
uh, and I found out uh, that 23% of a fuck ton of dollars is enough to cover the cost of UBI. <laughs> that math actually does check out. Uh, so I didn't even need a calculator to do it. I just kind of figured it out. Now, in reality, the working class should benefit from the fruits of automation, right? If the corporate, corporate profits aren't changing, why not keep the amount of employees you have, pay them the same amount, and cut the workday in half. Isn't that the point of technology? To make our lives easier? To make everybody's lives easier? I mean, the real result of automation should be a little extra leisure for the same pay. And that's been your fork full of noodles for this week. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please make sure you hit that like button and hit that share button. Get the word out about this episode. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube or on Facebook, uh, it is very likely that topics like this are uh, highly censored. They don't go out to as many people as you think they would go out to. So if you if you are watching it on those platforms, please make sure you hit the like and the share. It helps me reach uh, more people on that platform. If you're watching this on a different platform, if you're watching this on my Rockfin page, thank you so much, and I hope you consider following me on Rockfin. And if you're not on Rockfin, I highly go go check out Rockfin.com. Uh, they are a crypto blockchain. Uh, website that's kind of like Netflix for content creators. They, if for ten bucks a month, you can uh, check out all of the premium content that every single content per, uh, creator on Rockfin puts out, including myself. You got Graham Elwood, Jimmy Dore, Ron Placone, Hard Lens Media. Uh, you got Action for Assange. You got Nico House, Kim Iverson. A ton of folks are on. Uh, Rockfin. So if you are a political junkie, if you like political commentary, if you like political uh, uh, journalism and, and commentary, that's the site for you to go. Uh, so make sure you check that out. Um, I'm going to be doing a bunch of uh, live virtual shows all throughout the fall into the, uh, into the, the winter as well. Uh, it's part of the way that I'm earning my income now that I'm not a full-time touring comedian due to the pandemic. So if you want to come to one of these live virtual shows, you can do so by going to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for being a subscriber. Thank you to all the sustaining members that watch this uh, every single week. I really appreciate it. Till next week, thank you for tuning in.